Now it's time for Lefties Losing It. I do like to focus on the antics of the lunatic fringe and how their antics are being normalised in blue states. But we've got our own lefties right here in Australia. We're not immune from this phenomenon, even in our parliament. And they're not all Greens or from Labor's socialist left faction. Take a look at Senator Jackie Lambie, who not only wants greater censorship, but she wants to throw Elon Musk in jail if he doesn't comply. Elon Musk has no social conscience or conscience whatsoever. I don't know whatever whatever Elon Musk is on that says that that's OK to continue to air that is absolutely disgusting behaviour. And quite frankly, the bloke should be jailed and the sooner that we can bring rules in or do something about this sort of um, uh, this sort of game playing with our social media um, the better off we're going to be but quite frankly the power that that man has um, because of that platform that he's on it's got to stop it has absolutely got to stop what <laughs> that woman is a senator in the Australian Parliament I mean if you thought that was just an Isolated incident, a throwaway remark she regrets and has apologised for. Well, think again. Here she is on Sky News saying Elon Musk, the greatest modern crusader we have for free speech, should be behind bars and throw away the keys. So when it comes to the tech billionaire, like I've already said, I think he's a social media knob with no social conscience. He has absolutely no social conscience. Someone like that should be in jail and the key be thrown away. That bloke should not be have a right um, to be out there on his own ideolo ideology platform and creating hatred. In jail for promoting his ideology? Uh, what, what would that be, Jackie? Free speech, perhaps? You accuse him of promoting hatred. I'd argue politicians like you promote and inspire far more hatred than the uh, man who is copying unhinged hatred for spending billions of his own money to promote free expression. But we really shouldn't be surprised by Tasmanian Senator Jackie Lambie. She has form as a lefty losing it. This bill says the freedom of unvaccinated is more important than the freedom of the vaccinated. Really? It says that nine in 10 Australian adults who have gone out and got the jab don't get a choice themselves that we don't have a choice to keep COVID out of our work sites, our wage care homes, our pubs, our cafes, our houses, away from our kids. It says some people should be allowed to make consequence-free decisions, that some people should be able to yell fire in a crowded room and get away with it scot-free. I don't think so. Not on my watch. Here's the thing, being held accountable for your own actions isn't called discrimination. It's called being, you wouldn't believe it, a goddamn bloody adult. That's right as being an adult. Yes, she's a senator in the Australian Parliament. Apparently, if you don't support mandated COVID jabs, you're not an adult. That's what that meltdown was about. It was all in reaction to One Nation, which had introduced a bill intended to end coronavirus vaccine mandates. But the... Tasmanian wasn't done yet. When this lefty loses it, she really loses it. We don't have lockdowns and border restrictions because state premiers love discrimination. That's rubbish. We have them because state premiers don't want to be, don't want people dying. Because they don't want to be playing Russian roulette with their own people's lives. That's why they're doing it. That is why they're doing it. One Nation is the champion for the right for unvaccinated, COVID-carrying mainlanders to, get, to come to Tasmania and create an outbreak. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's not going to happen under my watch, and I doubt very much if it's going to happen under Premier Gutman's watch. Yes, those crippling, illiberal, unscientific lockdowns and border closures that stopped Australians crossing state borders even was all about keeping us safe. I hope you're all grateful and it worked so beautifully, except, you know, for all the excess deaths we're seeing, all the mental health harms, the economic mayhem. It was all worth it. Let's go back to that epic rant here. Jackie wants you to know she really, really cares about your safety. And we need to do everything we possibly can to keep ourselves safe, our kids safe, our grandchildren safe, and our friends and family. That's what we need to do. Sometimes sacrifices have to be made. 
sometimes sacrifices have to be made and now Jackie wants you to sacrifice your free speech to uh, keep us safe. She wants to sacrifice your ability to know and see what is happening. Thanks a lot, Tasmania. We're being mocked around the world thanks to that woman. This week she has declared that she's leaving X. What a brave heroine she is. She's leading by example. But I say this to everybody else. I'll be switching off X today. I'll be doing that um, before I get to the airport this afternoon. And I suggest that the other 226, there's 227 members of parliament do the same thing and show them that you mean business. Because when you want to lead by example, it has to happen from here. It has to happen from here. So start switching off X. Start throwing it back at him. We've got to start from here. The delusion there is stunning. Let's uh, check in now with those anti-Israeli protests at Columbia University, the youngest and brightest, are expressing their angst at what they claim is a genocide through silent dance. <laughs> Oh, you got to laugh. But remember when it was comics that made us laugh? Remember when comedians were actually funny? I bet this guy doesn't. Some of my best friends identify as members of the cisgender and heterosexual community. <laughs> and I know that you guys are going through a lot right now. <laughs> That's why every morning during my sun salutation, I take a 15 second breath to acknowledge how difficult it must be for straight people to remember how to use they, them pronouns for us. About as funny as an ingrown toenail. Well, there are still comics around who are very funny and we've got plenty of them right here in Australia, including this duo simply called Superwog. They went that way. Okay, male or female? Neither, they, them. What? That's their pronoun. Okay, so how many were there? Oh my God, one, you idiot. They're non-binary. So does non-binary have a hole or a pole? We just need to clarify. They who? Who them? Where who? Who's who? Who's who? They, they them? Oh, who? We're having pronoun trouble again. <laughs> Brilliant. Now to Google, which yesterday sacked more workers that had participated in protests. The lefty tech giant with a virtual monopoly is dealing with a problem of its own making. Its radical left employees are losing it in the workplace, staging protests in New York and California because of an AI deal Google has with the Israeli government. Google, you can't hide. Google, Google, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. We charge you with genocide. Google, Google, you can't hide. Google, Google, you can't hide. You are funding genocide. You are funding genocide. These protesters really do enjoy chants, don't they? Uh, they just love mindlessly repeating whatever someone yells out. And Oscar-winning actress and lefty losing at Susan Sarandon prove that you can yell out just about anything and they'll chant it back at you. Especially in a place of education. Especially in a place of education. And supposedly higher thought. And supposedly higher thought. To be attacked. Uh, to be attacked. With racism. With racism. And intolerance. And intolerance. Is not acceptable. Is not acceptable. There are many, many people. There are many, many people. That's unintentionally hilarious, I've got to say. But, I mean, how long could this go on? People who are old and afraid. People who are old and afraid. Are looking to you. Are looking to you. And your voices. And your voices. And your organization. And your organization. And your tenacity. And your tenacity. And your kindness. And your kindness. To make a difference in this situation. To make a difference in this situation. You give me hope. You give me hope. To me and so many people. To me and so many people and in the end the truth will win and in the end the truth will win it's important at this point it's important at this point 
That's about all I can take, but it actually went on even longer than that. It really did. Now to a lefty who is semi-regularly sensible in calling out the excesses of his mob, but let's be honest, Bill Maher normally wins enormous praise, including from me, for saying what Conservatives have been saying for years. And at the end of the day, he's still going to vote for the likes of Joe Biden and Gavin Newsom, who are ushering in the lunacy that he complains about. But uh, good on him, I guess, for saying this. Maybe it's time to admit that sometimes drag queen story hour is more for the queen than the kids. <laughs> sure, kids love a clown, but does the clown have to have tits? <laughs> And when I see a five-year-old tipping, tipping at a bar under a sign that says it's not going to lick itself, do I have to pretend that's cool in order to keep my liberal ID card? Sorry, I can't do that. If you want kids to be more tolerant, why not have handicapped people read them stories? Kids are more likely to encounter disabled people than drag queens in life. Bill, bless you, but how can you support the biggest supporters of this ideology? It's one thing to be batshit crazy, but you know better and you still support Biden and Newsom and so many others like them.